I would like to thank Scorpio Guy for sending me the story. Now, I thought I was actually done with the particular story on the guy, Nathan Phillips, the native who was taunted by those uh, 45 supporters. But something was just sent to me. And I'm not surprised that this has come out. And I'm going to speak on it. But to that next part, two things that I want to mention in reference to the previous video I did. One, they told or were selling this man to, you know, say, build that wall, build that wall. Not realizing this guy's a native, so he was already here before their ancestors got here. He's not Mexican. He's from, he was from the establishment before the establishment was called the establishment that it is called now. Number two, this man, if y'all didn't know, was a Vietnam vet, which means he fought in one of the most famous wars the um, world has ever known probably alongside one or a few of their ancestors. And these are the same group of people that say we need to respect the troops and do this and do that um, when it comes to the veterans. And nine times out of ten, they probably don't even do or practice what they preach. But those are the only two things I wanted to mention. Now, what I have just been sent is that uh, is an update, so to speak. Nothing consequential, <laughs> probably nothing ever that deep when it comes to them. But the woman or the mother to the I'm only going to assume it's the this boy here came out and said that the people to blame for the incident that happened that has since gone viral is black Muslims. So there you go. They had to find a way to insert a black figure or black figures into the equation. Now I'm going to go ahead and read this article coming from Yahoo News. It says the mother of a Native American man, along with his friends at a rally in Washington, D.C., has blamed black Muslims for their confrontation without providing any evidence for the claim. Of course, she didn't have to have any evidence for the claim. All they heard was black and then the bonus, the cherry on top was Muslims behind it. That's all they needed to hear. In this establishment, that would be considered a double negative. The teenager was among a group of students wearing Make America Great Again hats who were were criticized for taunting the musician Nathan Phillips, surrounding him and jeering and chanting, build the wall, build the wall. But his mother claimed black Muslims had been harassing the group of Donald Trump supporters from the private all-male Covington Catholic High School in Kentucky. Have you ever noticed that a lot of stories I do about these Christian schools or these Catholic schools or these just, just these church schools in general, they all have some kind of racist element to them? I swear, if it's, not, if, the, if it's nothing perverted coming out of these schools, it's something racial coming out of these schools. In an email to the news website, Heavy.com, she wrote, Did you hear the names the people were calling these boys? It was shameful. Did you witness the black Muslims yelling profanities and videotaping to get something to further your narrative of hatred? Did you know that this man came up to this one boy and drummed in his face? The encounter took place at an anti-abortion march for life or rally in the Capitol on Friday. Footage of the confrontation involved Mr. Phillips, a veteran of the Vietnam War and an elder of Nebraska's Omaha tribe, was shared online by organizers of an indigenous people's march that also took place on Friday. Separate videos shared online showed a group of black men standing near the scene of the confrontation, arguing with the MAGA hot wearing Trump supporters. It is unclear to which religious group the men belong, but they could be heard quoting passages from the Old Testament. Amid claims online that Mr. Phillips had himself participated and harassing the boys, another video shows the moment he arrived at the scene of the confrontation. The 64-year-old can be seen interposing himself between the two groups, ending a few yards away from both, before the students approach him and began chanting. The intimidation of Mr. Phillips, meanwhile, has prompted a torrent of outrage. Actors and activists, oh my God. I swear, Alyssa Milano is just one of seeking tension, attention-seeking uh, whore. Take it however you want. Like, she just had to find a way to insert herself into something because the chick is bored out of her mind. She ain't getting no roles, so she has to insert herself into anything and attach herself to anything. The woman's like a leech. But anyway, that chick tweeted that the footage brought me to tears. Did it really bring you to tears? After all, you are an actress. While actor Chris Evans said the student's actions were appalling and shameful, Democratic Congresswoman Deb Holland, a member of New Mexico's Laguna Pueblo tribe, 
tweeted that the students had shown blatant hate, disrespect, and intolerance. Ruth Buffalo, a North Dakota state lawmaker and member of the Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arakara Nation tribe, says she was saddened to see students showing disrespect to an elder who was also a military veteran. The behavior shown in that video is just a snapshot of what indigenous people have faced and are continuing to face. Both the Catholic High School and the Diocese of Covington have apologized and condemned the, condemned the actions of the students. We extend our deepest apologies to Mr. Phillips. This behavior is opposed to the church's teachings on the dignity and respect of the human person. I don't really need to read anything else. Um, that's just basically rehashing what we already know. But back to the original point, it doesn't surprise me that the mother of whoever it is, whether it's this boy right here who was at the forefront or any of the other boys that's in the background wearing that hat came out and said that it was the black Muslims fault that they were harassing him. And they said there was no evidence. Like I said, they didn't need any evidence. All they had to say was they were black and they were Muslim, put that together. And that was a way for them to try to create a narrative, but it's not going to go anywhere because she had no proof that this even happened or that was what the case was. But it was basically taking the accountability off of the Trump supporters and putting it onto someone else or uh, other people uh, so they wouldn't catch the heat. Well, it's already too late. They're already catching the heat and their faces are already out there. And the reason why they're probably saying that is because uh, the people, wherever they are, know who they are, and they probably have caught maybe threats of some sort. They love, like I said, they love to pedal around that freedom of speech thing. And yes, they have the freedom of speech to do whatever it is they want to say, whatever they want. But they just better be careful because we live in the information age. We live in the age of social media. When that stuff is recorded and it's put out there, whatever backlash you received, hey, it's up to the people how they feel when it comes to this. And it was at a, and it was at, it was like I said, it was too many rallies happening this weekend and they started to clash. So this doesn't surprise me that they did this. After all, you had white nationalists come from all across the establishment to go down to Charlottesville back in 2017 to do what they did. So for them to do this when they were supposed to be at one rally, they should have went to the rally they were at, stayed with them, and let that be that. But these individuals and people like them are just naturally confrontational, and we can thank their, their leader, their leader, keyword their leader for this. Because they have been emboldened. And to be honest, I think they've been this way. They were just waiting for someone to bring it out of them. They had to stay hit in the shadow for so long. And then, like I said, these boys are high school age, so they're not older than the age of 18. Which means they were all born in the 2000s. Like, they were born in 2000 or above. When they were born, I was, I was on my way to middle school when a lot of them were born, which means I was like 10, 11 years old. So to say that racism is going to die out when the older generation goes, that's uh, that could not be further from the truth, because all they're going to do is pass it down to their uh, to the younger generation is going to be an endless cycle, as you can clearly see. And not just with this particular case, there's plenty of others. That may go unreported. But yeah, for her to sit up there and say, oh, it was black Muslims fault for why they did what they did. That's ridiculous, but it's not surprising. They just had to throw a black person in there to try to add a fuel to a fire that they created. It's always black people's fault for everything they do. And they say we don't take accountability for our, our actions. They have some nerve to even utter those words ever in life for anything. If you look back through their history, that should be a saying that should never leave their li their uh, their lips or lack thereof. Y'all let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. The links will be in the description. I'll talk to you in the next one.